السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Wish you happy Friday and peaceful Friday. إن شاء الله. Last week we were talking about the con man and what he has been doing in the community, giving the example of a product called Tankush, which is selling nothing. Okay, to the community, giving some examples from different parts of the world. Today we'll be talking about community withdrawal and despair. Why should I withdraw myself from the community? Must be some reasons. Why should not I engage with my community? Why should I sideline myself from my community? And why should I feel despair? This word despair is something that we have to fight very hard. Tell will be able to remove it from the textbook and from the dictionary. Despair reflects the negative energy surrounding any individual. Any negative energy surrounding me or you or you or her or those people is the act of the devil himself or herself who is very, very, very dedicated to throw each and every one of us in the fire. As Allah mentioned in the Holy Quran, He comes from between our hands, arms, behind, on this side, from this side, till He let us to lose our life, dignity, and succeed in throwing the individuals into hell fire. So it keeps surrounding us with negative energy, which we call it nowadays despair, leading that, to, that the individual will withdraw himself and herself from the community. Despair. We lose our will to act. We lose our de determination our zealousness, our power, our spirit to act and respond and communicate and connect. We become isolated and isolating ourselves and not connecting or communicating with our family members, with our friends, with our neighborhood, and with our community and with our country. This is exactly against the teaching of all the prophets. Especially Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the best amongst us, the, those people who mix with others and be patient on the hardship that they receive from being with them. Also, when we choose to relax, chill, to have this shelling effect, to do nothing and think about nothing, promote nothing, motivate nobody, relax, chill, feel easy, feel, feel, feel. Or, okay? To give up. Despair will let us to give up to what is surrounding us, not trying anymore. Some of other causes of despair is the loss of our faith. If we talked about it is loss of the faith in what? In your society. You don't believe too much in the society. You don't believe too much in your family. You don't 
believe too much that you can help your friends. You don't believe too much that you can help your country. Loss of faith in your religion and do not understand and realize how all the prophets and messengers of God were tortured, were living a very hardship life, but they never surrendered and felt this feeling of despair. Okay? Those of faith in society, values, religion, and the charity work when you can go outside to help your neighbor and the poor people and the widows and the orphans and the children, etc., etc., etc. Okay, why do you feel despair? Look at us nowadays and what is surrounding us. Whether it's political, social, religious, economical, which make young people to feel despair. When young people look at what's happening in Syria, in Iraq, in Yemen, in South Sudan, in Somalia, in Democratic Republic of Congo, in Myanmar, in Libya, etc., 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 they feel despair. But we have to come out of this as well. When we look at our, the political system surrounding us, whether you call it right wing or left wing, or whatever you call it, people feel despair. I have this kind of desperate feeling or feeling despair. These are some of the definitions and causes of despair. Main reasons of despair, it is either because of corruption, the administration, corruption, political, economic, social, educational, and religious. When we we'll start with the religious causes of despair, the quality, look at the quality of the individuals who give the religious creed or opinion and fatwa. Most of them either ignorant or politically attached to certain political background or people who are gaining from the religious teaching. That's why we lose the moral value through the wrong teaching and wrong fatwa and wrong opinion given to us by such individual group or such an institution. And we see it every day on television, on social media, on any other ways of journal, uh, uh, publication, others, and this confuses youth and community. Corruption. Corruption is a global disease, whether it's in the West, in the advanced country, or whether in the East and South, in the developing countries, with different proportional uh, uh, measures of it. We find this kind of corruption in government offices, in the society, in the, in, in, in the, in the companies, and so on, so on, so which led young people to feel despair, this feeling of despair, and frustrated. Okay, now our social life and the economical life we find in the economic life we are controlled by the international institution who set up the policy of economy globally and control countries. Such an institution could be World Bank, could be International Monetary Fund, could be the banking system, 
which is not very fair on the economy of the growing countries or the poor countries. This results into high level of unemployment and high level of debts and uh, uh, high interest rate on those debts on the countries. Not the reason. Social, in our society, most of countries in different parts of the world, such as in the Muslim populated countries or in the Arab world, is really not allowing the civil society to grow effectively. So it can produce solution to the local community, so it can become another partner to the government and the private sector and the academia, so it produces quality leadership from amongst youth, men and women, so it produces all this kind of quality leadership, innovative solution on the local and in the international sphere. So when we look at the fear of government of having such a strong civil society sector and organization and fighting such a sector and fighting such organization, this led the people and the youth especially to have this feeling of despair. Why should we fight civil society organization? and social movement because we are creating the one man government or the one political uh, one, 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 one political uh, party to lead a country there is no really uh, political stability in some of these countries The country or the government who are fighting civil society does not have strong civil society sector and organization yet. It is, as I called it, a fragile country. Those countries who think that they have got very strong security and military, uh, tightening everything and preventing the social movement from growth is are creating a fragile state. Education, the educational system, the curriculum does not, is not good enough to match the current need of the society or the economic need of the society or the market need. So qualified, young qualified people, when they are qualified from university, they don't find job because they have not been trained to actually be educated or trained to get these jobs in the market. Also, the traditional curriculum which you have been teaching it for the last 30 and 40 and 50 years and you do not want to look outside the box and to have the alternative education such as vocational training or selective education to the highly selective people. Vocational training is something like a social stigma. None of the girls would love to marry somebody who would not qualify for the university because they don't have a degree, but they might have income and the job. This is the problem of our social feeling towards somebody who is not qualified for the university. Selective uh, education is what we call it nowadays is uh, a good example of it is uh, the academy, the football academy. Football academy take the young talented player and teach them to become superstar and sell them. This is this sort of education to be a part of our curriculum where we get the young uh, poets the young actors and actresses, the young artists, the young politician, the young, 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 and try to uh, uh, adopt or try to uh, polish or try to 
improve the talent of those young individuals in our society and to have this kind of alternative education system. Political system, as I said, it's a one-man show. The own political party in certain countries or the security states or the intelligent states which prevents people from advocating the rights, asking for the rights, and does not have proper parliamentary representation from the country to represent the society, every different society in the country. So all these five or six, one, two, three, four, five, six, will lead to despair and let the young people to become very, very, very affected but by what every uh, action taken by governments or the coal man and producing and selling the product which does not exist in the country, as we said last week in our coal man presentation. How to uh, treat it or to tackle it on the individual basis, on a family basis and on the level of society. On the individual basis, it's myself. I have to keep asking myself, what's my role in my society, in my community, in my neighborhood? and keep looking at it every day and evaluating it and I keep finding a role for myself. And here I have to say, for any young man and young woman, do not ever stop making initiatives, taking initiatives, even if you fail thousand times, even if you fail more than that, keep taking initiatives. One time you will succeed and you will make the change because each and every one of you is a change maker. Start from the responsibility. We have to keep patient, be patient all the time. Patient all the time. And believe that any solution become gradual. No magic solution will happen to us, who cannot bring any magic solution. Even prophets it took them years to try to get handful of people to believe in the religion. So patience is a crucial factor of the behavior of the individual and gradualism. Okay? It's the second one. See, if I give the example of Addison, who discovered the, discovered the electricity, he made 999 experiments and he failed and then, then he succeeded number one. People are telling him you failed 999 times but he told them no, I experimented 999 times and I needed to make 1000 experiments to succeed and he succeeded after 1000 times. So look at my own. Gradualism, being patient, and failure will never stop any one of you from succeeding. If you, win, if you want to win the Nobel Peace Prize, it is not just a magic touch or just a magic a luck. No, you have to try very hard days and nights and years to get it. Not something come out of luck. One of the reasons of treating despair is to balance between, between your private life and business and the social life of the community. As much as I help myself to earn my living, as much as I must help my community, my society, and support them in the neighborhood. Okay? I must be a part of the change maker. I must be a part of the change maker to be able 
to make the change, the positive thing in your society. And the last one, which is, I cannot do it alone. I must build partnership with my friends, with my neighbors, with my colleagues to have the successful solution. Patience, role, gradualism, failure to succeed, succeed to, and I, failure is not the end of the story. It's the beginning of success. The balance between my private life and my social life, to help the community, and to take the risk. I must take this, and I keep saying again, do as many initiatives as you can. Do as many initiatives as you can, and don't stop taking initiatives or doing initiatives. Family role. When I go, I want to get married. Or I'm a man or a woman, I have to choose the right individual who will be able to build the family with me. Because this family is the most important unit in building society and the country. Without good family to foster the, the new generation, we don't have a good future for the new generation. So this is very important. When we have children at home, we have to, to include them in our discussion, to treat them as young men, to treat them as brothers and sisters, not to shut them up. Not to uh, marginalize them, not to swear at them, not to insult them, not to curse them. Okay? For me, I am a child, or my young man, or, a, or help, I have to help my father and my mother, and try as well actually to help my sisters and my brothers. This is the parents' role, and this is my role as a son or as a daughter. So I don't throw only the responsibility on my mother and my father alone. In the society, what's my role in the society? Okay? In the neighborhood, I need to look at every neighbor as like my sister and brother, my father and my mother, not to do bad things to them. Not to do illegal or haram, forbidden things to anyone. In my school, my college, my university, my role is to excel in obtaining the knowledge, to be the best, not only in the knowledge, to be the best to my friends, to my colleague, to my teacher, to my supervisor, to be the best to the, port the, the porters, the cleaners, the guardsmen, and so on, so on, so on, so on, so on, so on. To be modest, to be humble, to show humility. When I'm in the society, I need to look with respect to the liberals. Look with respect to anybody in the society. Not to look down at them because I'm an educated man or a woman, or because I am a rich man or a woman. The military and the security officers, I have to treat them with respect because security officers, like policemen, are staying there at night to protect my safety in the country. And military officers stay day and night at the border of my country to protect the whole nation. So I have to treat them with respect and dignity. Also come back to my neighborhood, to the streets, to the avenues, and I have to be one of the positive uh, individuals in the neighborhood, no matter our social class of this neighborhood is a high social class or low social class. I have to bring motivation to the table of the people in the neighborhood. How to implement all this? Okay, it's theoretical, it's theoretical. First of all, you as a young man, or a young woman, when you have an idea, do not keep it to yourself. You have to discuss it with a team of friends, handful of young men and young women to think down together collectively. To think down together collectively and you must, I keep saying, many, many, 
many times. Do not let anyone to stop you from taking an initiative or making initiatives and trying to succeed. At the end of the day, you will succeed even if you fail hundred times. Don't stop taking initiatives. Don't work alone. You must work within a team. And the team, once they create the initiatives, they test it on a lower scale, small scale, in a small place, and take it six months to a year to two, to try, and if, if I put an initiative in education in my avenue, on my street, I start small project, simple idea, effective, will be seen by my community in the neighborhood. Once it becomes recognized by my neighborhood, I start to change it from just a community initiative into an organization which is resistant in the country or in the government. So there will be more structure, and after that, you will grow to become an institution. Keep yourself busy. Thinking ahead for the community, building teams, creating initiatives, changing your initiatives into organization. Never stop. And don't let anyone to let you stop taking initiative. Don't let anyone to stop you helping your neighbors, your community, your society, your country. Don't let anyone to divide the community through saying that they are from the north or the south or Christian or Muslim or Hindu or Sikh. No. We are all brothers and sisters, citizens of the same country, uh, neighbors in the same area, and colleagues in the work or friends in the school. Once we build our organization, then we can develop our organization to become an institution which will be more, more powerful, uh, which will shape the, 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 the shape of the country by uh, uh, developing the philosophy of thinking of the society. When we come back to it again, my conclusive remark for you, we together must try to remove the word despair from our life by keep teamwork, look objectively at our society, our neighborhood, our country, take as many initiatives as we can, respect one another, be inclusive, do not leave anybody outside or leaving them behind. Be humble, show humility, be patient, but keep trying. Be patient, but keep trying. Work gradually. Nothing would be changing overnight. The mango tree will not be fruitful when you just put the seed in the ground. In the, in, 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 in the ground. Or when you marry your wife, your son, when he was born, or your daughter is born in, after, is not going to speak after six months, not going to be able to write and uh, uh, read, unless there's a miracle from God. Okay, it takes years to get your son and the daughter become qualified from university and school it takes years and years. Gradualism is one of the most important elements of success. The message tonight: Don't step, stop your anybody from letting you to make a teamwork to keep taking initiatives. Keep taking initiatives. Keep taking initiatives. The, the more initiatives you make, the more you will be able to remove the word despair from your dictionary and from your society and from your philosophy of thinking. And this is what we can do 
together, not only one by himself or herself. Arrogance is a sister and a brother of despair. Arrogance will lead to despair because everybody will reject you. I can thank you for being uh, uh, with us tonight. Uh, tomorrow, inshallah, we'll have another lecture from Birmingham University Medical School. It's about Islam and medicine. This will be at 3 o'clock uh, London time and 6 o'clock Mecca time. If you want to join us, most welcome. We'll be talking about uh, Ibn Sina, Abi Sina, then Thabit Ibn Qurra, and Abu Qasim al Zahrawi. And the great discovery has been made by those great scholars of medicine. Their, their, their achievement was not for the Muslims or for the Arabs, was for humanity. And they still are icons for humanity up till now and for more centuries. So if you want to meet us tomorrow, 3 o'clock London time or 6 o'clock uh, uh, Mecca time, we'll see you there. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.